Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Duracki. In this video, we're going to explore the specific surgical steps necessary to perform a superior capsular reconstruction. We're going to do so by looking at the right shoulder. As we zoom in on the right shoulder, we can see that this is the ball of the ball and socket. Here is the socket portion of the ball and socket. Here is your collarbone up above the shoulder. And this is a portion of the shoulder blade which goes around to the back. As we previously discussed, the rotator cuff tendons originate from muscles that attach onto the shoulder blade whose tendons attach around the circumference of the ball of the ball and socket. We also have your biceps tendon which comes up from the arm and attaches onto the top of the socket in this area. The unique thing about a superior capsule reconstruction is that as in this model you have a rotator cuff tear whose tendon has retracted so far back away from the ball that it is unable to be pulled back to the ball and reattached. So in this particular model we see that we have the subscapularis tendon in the front of the ball which is attached. We have the infraspinatus tendon which is attaching to the back of the ball which is attached and looks normal as well. However, there's a large gap between these two tendons where there is no tendon attached to the ball. And this is what we call the footprint of the supraspinatus tendon. In this model, the supraspinatus is torn and it's retracted so far back into the shoulder that it is no longer able to be pulled up over top of the ball. And so this is what we would call a massive irreparable rotator cuff tear. And if we are faced with a situation we are not going to be able to primarily fix the tendon back down to the bone, this would be an indication for a superior capsule reconstruction. So we had previously discussed that one of the primary functions of the rotator cuff tendon is to help to hold the ball down so that as you raise your arm up and around, the ball does not translate up but instead rotates in articulation with the socket. And one of the reasons that it is able to stay there is because of the pull of the rotator cuff holding the ball down. Of course, when you lose the rotator cuff tendon, the ball will ride up too high. And so in this illustration, we see that the missing rotator cuff has now been replaced by a superior capsule reconstruction which is essentially holding the ball down and allowing it to rotate in the appropriate position. So initially in order to place a superior capsule reconstruction we need to remove the long head of the biceps tendon. Oftentimes we will just simply cut the biceps and allow it to retract down and out of the shoulder joint. That is called a biceps tenotomy procedure. On occasion, we will cut the biceps tendon here and reattach it over onto the ball. This is called a biceps tenodesis procedure. For more information regarding tenotomy versus tenodesis, I would refer you to our biceps video. So in this particular video, they've performed a biceps tenodesis and removed the biceps from the top of the socket. We then create access to the shoulder through a series of portals via poke holes in the skin. Through the portals we want to roughen the bone up on top of the socket and then roughen the bone up on the top of the ball in order to create a bleeding bony surface for that superior capsular graft to be able to scar down to the bone. We come in, we place additional trephinations or holes in the bone to create bleeding. We then will drill and place anchors into the top of the socket as well as anchors into the top of the ball. So now we have placed anchors into the socket and the ball. 
we've driven sutures down into the bone that will then be used to attach the superior capsule reconstruction to the ball and socket. We will now measure the distance between the anchors and mark them on the appropriate position on the SCR graft. This allows us to place the sutures on the outside of the body and then transfer the graft into the joint. So we now have all of our different measurements. We then take an additional five millimeters around the course of the graft and shape the graft to the patient's shoulder. We then retrieve the sutures out of the body and pass the stitches up through the graft on the outside of the body. We will then pass the graft through the portal arthroscopically and into the shoulder joint where the graft is then tied down to both the socket as well as to the top of the ball. We will then incorporate stitches into the back of the graft in order to incorporate the remainder of the rotator cuff into the SCR graft. And this is the final product and you can see now how the superior capsular reconstruction graft has now covered the previous hole or gap in the rotator cuff tendon up top. I would like to thank Arthrex for providing the implants necessary to perform an arthroscopic superior capsular reconstruction of the shoulder. I would also like to thank Arthrex for providing the surgical animation necessary to create this video. I hope this video has helped you to better understand the surgical technique of placing a superior capsular reconstruction. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great day.